Hello guys, today I'm at the Woodward Hill Cemetery in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. There are a lot of old graves here, a lot of historic graves here. I wanted to show you one grave in particular, and that is right in front of me. This is the tomb of the 15th President of the United States, James Buchanan. As you can see, James Buchanan passed away a few years after the Civil War ended. He was a member of the Freemasons, and he was also a veteran of the War of 1812. James Buchanan was president right before Abraham Lincoln. And also, a lot of people consider James Buchanan one of the worst presidents in American history because essentially the Civil War started on his watch. Even though for the 20 years before Buchanan, the Civil War could have started any time before Buchanan. It could have started during Miller Fillmore's term. It could have started during Franklin Pierce's term. It just happened to finally boil down at the end of James Buchanan's term. And he just happened to be the unlucky president that started the Civil War. When South Carolina succeeded from the Union, it was pretty much after Abraham Lincoln was elected. It was a lame duck session, so Buchanan just had to wait for his term to end. It was pretty much over. He had a few months to go. And um, essentially, he didn't really feel the need to do anything. He felt like he should just leave the responsibility to the next president, which was Abraham Lincoln, to handle whatever was going to happen with this civil war and try to reunite the Union. After his time in office, Buchanan moved back here to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where his house is located, still today, and um, he lived out his final years here. A lot of people around this area had problems with Buchanan because he didn't, he didn't really do anything to the South to punish them for the succession or try to stop it during his final months in office. But again, I think he just wanted to leave it for the next president. He felt like I did, I'm did. i done what I can do and he was elected. It's his turn now. But this is the final resting place of James Buchanan here. And Buchanan is not the most famous president. You don't get people, a lot of people visiting his grave, I guess. I don't think there's a lot of videos on YouTube showing his grave. And a lot of people don't even know who James Buchanan was in today's America. If you take 10 people off the street and ask them who James Buchanan was, I bet nine of them wouldn't even know that name at all. So I've been here for a little bit. Uh, it is a cold day, but I have not seen anyone here visiting the grave of James Buchanan. Uh, this is technically the sixth president's grave I've been to. I've been to the graves at Arlington National Cemetery, which would be William Howard Taft, John F. Kennedy. I've been to George Washington at George Washington's Mount Vernon. I've been to uh, John Tyler and James Monroe, who are buried in Richmond, Virginia, Hollywood Cemetery. And out of all the president's graves I've been to, this is the only one I've been to for a um, good bit of time and never seen anyone else coming to visit. But his, gra his tomb is definitely well kept. Definitely has the flags there and definitely is in a nice spot here. So here is the final resting place of the 15th president of the United States, James Buchanan. Right here is the grave of Frederick Mullenberg, who served in the Continental Congress in Philadelphia from 1779 to 1780. He was also in the United States Congress from 1789 to 1797, which would have been when George Washington was president. He was also the first speaker of the House of Representatives in the United States. He passed away in the year 1801. But here's his grave right here. Right here we have a little section, probably a family plot. Graves have been here for a long time. They're actually, most of them are knocked over or have fallen over. And the ones that are still standing, you can, you can't even read anything on anymore. So. 
so it looks like the name was Newman and this individual passed away in 1924 There's actually a grave out here. So someone made a new one. Same same name that's on that grave. Right here there are some old crypts that really look like they haven't been visited in quite a long time. Honestly. From what I've seen in this cemetery so far, I don't know if the cemetery is still active or not, but it's well maintained in terms of the grass being cut. But there are a lot of graves that just look like they haven't been touched by any visitors in a long time, which we know happens after a few generations. You know, no one's gonna visit your grave after a few generations. Anyone who knew you is gonna be gone too. But um, look at these old crypts. Yeah, this one looks like it had some damage, so they boarded it up. And you see the piles of leaves down here. And there's another one over here that has some extensive damage to it. Uh, doesn't even have a name on it anymore. Looks like it's just slowly falling apart. You can see the bricks on the ground. Even this one has damage. You see the weeds growing up there and I'm guessing this is a piece that came off the wall there maybe. Look at this grave right here. It's covered in weeds. You can't even make out the full name anymore. Let me see if I can see a year anywhere that would tell me. So. Uh, died 1881 so no one's visited uh, this grave in quite a while and right behind that grave covered in weeds you have this grave which is now covered pretty much by a tree uh, the d date of death on this grave is 1875 I can see that I don't know if you guys can, but it's right there, 1875. It looks like the cross is about to fall over. I see a flag over here, so that probably means we there's a veteran buried right here. Let me see. U.S. Army, World War II. That veteran's grave back there was really the only grave I've seen so far that's kind of modern. Everything else here is pretty old. You see more graves that are being uh, taken over by nature. See, there's, there's actually trash that has blown in here on these graves. Uh, the date of death on these two, 1891 and 1876. I guess for most of these graves, they don't get visited unless a ancestor finds out a uh, member of their family was buried here and they come out to visit. And that would probably be the first time they ever, you know, see the grave. So, like, if you found out your great, great, great grandfather it's buried here you know you might come visit just to see the family name on a grave or something you know but other than that it looks like most of these graves you know time has taken its toll 
Here's a um, grave right here, as you see I'm pointing at. Uh, this is a lieutenant from the Revolutionary War. So he lived till 1811, 1747 to 1811. Some more graves from around the same time period, the early 1800s. This one looks like it says 1805 or 1806 on it as the date of death. I see another flag here. Let's see who this grave is. Oh, you can't read it. But it does say veteran, 18, so this is a Civil War grave, because 1861, there is actually something under these leaves here. Department of the United States of America Army. And it says veteran 1861 to 1865, which would, would be Civil War, but I, I can't make out anything on this grave anymore. I don't know a name. But this is a Civil War veteran's grave right here. Even though I can't read the name, we know that's a veteran right there from the Civil War. Right here, I found another grave of a Civil War veteran. I really... I really like this cemetery. I like exploring it. It's really uh, quiet here. I see another flag. I always like to look at the flags, see who they are, because they're either someone who served in the government or they are veterans. So here we have another flag. And this grave is pretty buried here. It says, and I'm, it looks like it's a Civil War veteran's grave. There's some, there's a lot of crows over here. Kind of has that fall feel. It is technically fall, but it's, it's after Thanksgiving now. It's late November. It's almost December. Got the crows over here. There's a tree down over there. wonder if any uh, graves were damaged. If, if no graves were damaged by this tree falling, I would be shocked. Looks like everything back here is still standing. There, there is a grave here that's kind of buried, but I, I don't know if that was already like that or not. There are some graves back here that were damaged by possibly this tree. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, this cemetery, the grass has been cut. It's not uh, like the grass is cut, but other than that, uh, there's trees here. I don't know how long ago this tree fell. Uh, there's trash. I mean, obviously, it's been windy the last few days, so trash can blow in here from anywhere, but. I don't even know. I don't think this cemetery is still active. There, there might be a few plots here that someone bought a long time ago. And they're still alive, but I don't know if there's any activity here because I've only seen one grave from the 2000s here. So. And again, I haven't seen uh, any other people here since I've been here, which is always interesting when you visit a cemetery that a former American president is buried in. We have some mausoleums here. Again, 
Uh, it shows signs of age on it. It's pretty rusted up here. Uh, some missing pieces that would have been there at one point. That's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy it. I didn't even explore the whole cemetery. It goes on way over that way. But I mainly came here to see the grave of President James Buchanan. And just ended up walking around a little bit more and exploring it. So if you guys want to visit the cemetery yourselves, you can. It's in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Fix Image saying peace.